Welcome to the Dan and Tobago Town News for a report, a product of the Government Information Services Limited and the Ministry of Communications. I'm Nicola Barito. Let's take a look at the headlines. The Prime Minister announces new cabinet appointments. Minister of the People pledging his all to serve both ministry and constituency. And the national community is being called upon to accept its responsibility in the fight against crime. To our top story, Prime Minister the Honourable Kamlo Pasad Bissasa has announced the changes within her government and its ministerial portfolios. This comes on the heels of a cabinet reshuffle which saw the revocation of two ministers and over more than 10 changes. As part of the process of a reinvigorated government, I have proposed the following changes be made to my cabinet by His Excellency the President of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. And these changes include the following. There will be, I have advised His Excellency, to revoke the appointment of uh, two senators, the uh, senator who is the Minister of uh, Justice and the senator who was the Minister of Communications. In their place, and including the place of uh, Lindira Udit, who was Vice President of the Senate, I have advised His Excellency to appoint as a senator Mr. Gerald Hadid as Minister of Communications to appoint Ms. Razia Ahmed as a senator, as a minister of state in the Ministry of Gender, Youth and Child Development. Uh, the Ministry of Justice will be headed by Minister Senator Emmanuel George. I've also advised that Mr. Gary Griffith be appointed a senator and minister of national security. The other changes to the cabinet include the following. Minister of Gender, Youth and Child Development, Minister Clifton Dikoto. I have split the Ministry of Housing and Land and Marine Resources into two ministries. One will be the Ministry of Housing and Urban Development, which will be headed by Dr. Rudal Munilal. The second ministry, which is a newly created ministry, uh, will be headed by uh, Mr. Jairam Simangal, that is the Ministry of Land and Marine Resources. I have split the Ministry of Local Government and Works and Infrastructure into two separate ministries. The Ministry of Local Government will be headed by Minister Marlene Kudre, and the Minister of Works and Infrastructure by Dr. Suresh Rambachan. I have also uh, advised for the following changes to be made. Minister Roger Samuel to be appointed as Minister of National Diversity and Social Integration. Minister Kady, Stephen Kady, to be appointed as Minister of Transport. And uh, Mr. Chandra Sharma to be appointed as Minister of Tourism. These are the realignments that I've advised for His Excellency to make. Now, these are the realignments that the Prime Minister has advised His Excellency to make. She adds that every member has been advised of their accelerated progress expected in each area for which they are responsible. She says performance reviews will be conducted on a regular basis and, if necessary, further changes would be made. And in other news, Minister of the People and Social Development and Member of Parliament for Karani Central, Dr. the Honourable Glenn Ramadasing, is pledging to continue giving his all to serve both his ministry and the people of his constituency. He makes the promise while meeting with his constituents at his constituency office. I will speak no more about their negativity. When they talk, tell me who to help. Tell me who do have food. Tell me who do have clothes. Who do have shelter. I go in there. From tomorrow. Minister Ramadan Singh insists he has done all he can for the people of Trinidad and Tobago and will continue to do so, despite what some critics may see. Minister Ramadan Singh says he's proud of his accomplishments and what he has achieved for the people of not just Karani Central, but also Trinidad and Tobago as a whole. He adds that he has done everything he can to develop the constituency, even getting all the other ministries involved in the improvement and development process. In Susulans, today you will find an $850,000 activity center, like a community center, where there was a broken down galvanization. That is improvement in the lives of the people of Karani Central. In Carson Field, while we are working with the farmers to organize them, we have given out book bags and school bags to the poor children and built homes for the people in Castlefield so that they could live under shelter. 
in Edinburgh 500. We are putting up street lights in places that had no street lights at all. And so people are feeling safer as they go to their homes and crime has come down to almost nothing. Dr. Ramadan Singh says infrastructural development is important and as such, the county central residents can expect many improvements. We are extending the bus service so that they move throughout the length and breadth of Edinburgh 500, Londonville and Montrose, and then to San Fernando, Chaguanas, and Port of Spain. In Flanagan Town, we launched the first carnival so that the people of that area can get something. In Presal, we are paving roads, building drains, and we will make the community center accessible to the people of Presal after so many years. In La Cuesa, we are putting up lights on the ground so that the children, the youths, can extend the daytime where we have already done it in Arena. We've already done it in Palmis. We've already done it in Edinburgh 500, where there were no lights for 40 years. We put lights on those recreation grounds. Gregory McBurney, News 4. When we come back, budget review on education. Stay with us. As the anticipation builds for the presentation of the 2013-2014 fiscal package, we continue to analyze and review the promises and commitments made by the government in the 2012-2013 fiscal package. We now take a look at the developments in education and training over the last year. We shall continue our government assistance for tuition expenses gate program. In his feature address on education and training on the budget 2012-2013, Minister of Finance Larry Hawaii noted that the gate program, however, has been subjected to some abuse by users and has produced some undesirable results. He said that with the approaching new year 2013, the government will implement a number of measures with the objective of eliminating waste and abuse as follows. The program will refocus on the areas of priority study necessary to support our strategy for economic and industrial development. <clears throat> Two, tuition fees for undergraduate programs at both private and public institutions will be funded at varying rates based on their socio-economic priority. Three, the gate clearance program will apply to all public and private tertiary education programs. And four, more comprehensive methods on the determination of tuition fees at public and private tertiary education institutions will be instituted. He added that the government is taking steps to ensure that private tertiary education institutions strengthen their accountability requirements. Minister Hawaii added that students receive gate funding meet normal academic standards and serve their contractual obligations. The minister revealed that primary school students would also share a big slice of the pie with regard to education goodies. This administration will continue to focus on curricular reform, teacher training, new teaching methodologies and technology, in particular the provision of laptops for each student commencing secondary school. We shall continue to make secondary education easily access accessible. But there has to be the recognition. Higher education. Higher education easy, sorry, my apologies, Mr. Speaker. We shall continue to make higher education easily accessible. And with regard to skills training, the minister said our human resource pool must respond to the wide needs of our economy. Thus, he said, a wide range of programs would be established. Since this revelation in 2012, checks revealed that the National Energy Skills Center is now providing the first ever drilling school in the Caribbean, meeting in the process the demand for upstream service personnel both locally and internationally. Also, the Automotive Dealers Association, in collaboration with the National Energy Skills Center, 
has also since established the NESC Automotive Technology Institute for producing automotive technicians. The College of Science, Technology and Applied Arts of Trinidad and Tobago will soon begin construction of its main campus in Chagonas. It will open a campus in Sandy Grandi and in conjunction with the University of the West Indies, will soon launch the Eldorado, Eldorado Academy of Nursing and Allied Health to address the endemic shortage of nurses in the health sector. And fourth, in consultation with the THA, TH we shall also be establishing in Tobago an integrated campus to house various public training institutions. Following Minister Hawaii's 2012-2013 proclamation, putting students on global map for academic excellence is where Education Minister Dr. Tim Gopisingh wanted to see the local schooling system reach, and indeed his plans for the 2012-2013 fiscal year did point it in that direction. Already Trinidad and Tobago ranks in the top 80 in the world, but maintaining this requires ensuring that right resources for our teachers and students are provided. Also, the teachers within the ECCE system received additional benefits and extension of their contracts. This as the Ministry of Education has signed an MOU for the expansion of the program through a partnership with the private sector. Education Minister Dr. Tim Gopisingh revealed this during the weekly post-cabinet media briefing. Other initiatives soon came on the way the installation of CCTV cameras at schools. Also, the Ministry of Tertiary Education and Skills Training launched its St. Augustine Education City Committee's Hopper Bus Service, an initiative that provides free transportation services to pupils in uniform, tertiary students with institution ID, and elderly persons residing and accessing tertiary education within the parameters of the St. Augustine area. Joseph Lopez, News 4. <music>The national community is being called upon to accept its responsibility in the fight against crime as the country moves toward another milestone in its independence. The fight against crime does not only rest at the feet of the government, but rather all those who are affected by the social ill. On Friday, the Honorable Dr. Suraj Ratan Rambachan, Minister of Local Government, used the platform of the Shogunas Borough Corporation's 51st anniversary of independence celebrations to deliver a message to the nation, calling for individuals to work together for the greater good of the country. In the life of an individual, age 50 is always a very important age. It's an age when one is expected to have gone through many experiences, the experience of being a child, the experience of being a youth, the experience of being an adult, and to move into a time in one's life when one engages in deeper reflection and when one is concerned about one's spiritual evolution and development. And it is no different with a nation. This nation at age 51 is supposed to be moving in the direction of developing as a more mature nation. A nation in which individuals are more committed to national development. An age in which individuals and citizens are more committed to service and to serving the interests of the nation, to putting nation above self, to putting country first. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a time in the history of our country when there are many challenges facing Trinidad and Tobago. But I'm sure that if you were to be speaking 50 years ago, some of the very challenges existed then. But at that time, we were perhaps able to approach our challenges much more as a community than we are perhaps approaching our challenges today. It is not that the challenges that face us today cannot be defeated or cannot be overcome. But I do believe that we need a greater sense of community and a greater sense of citizenship in order to eradicate some of the very vicious social problems that face our country. He said that everyone has a role and responsibility in the fight against crime, and he believes this will become more evident in time when religious leaders, NGOs and CBOs are called upon to play their part. Nikolai Edwards, News 4. Sport is up next. Stay with us.
recent upgrade of the Coconut Drive Recreation Ground is welcomed by all in the Mova community, including the professional sportsmen and women. News 4 Sports spoke to Jabal Shabazz, head coach of the high-profile Caledonia AIA Football Club, and he praised government's efforts in the area of sport. We have more in this report from Wayne Cunningham. The Coconut Drive Recreation Ground suffered from neglect and vandalism for a number of years, with four sporting clubs and personalities to other facilities out of the area. But with the first phase of restoration work completed, teams such as the Mova Elements Football Club and the Mova Jets Athletic Club now have a place to call home again. Professional football coach Jamal Shabazz welcomes the upgrade and looks forward to future works in the drive. All our lives we, we were praying for facilities in the community. All our lives, um, our teams over the years, Caledonia, elements, the, 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 the running group, mover jets, the cricketers, you know, all our life we've struggled for facilities and um, I think it's a big step for us to have the facilities being upgraded. Um, we would like to see a, 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 a really top class ground in, in Coconut Drive and in Park Street. We're hearing good things and people saying the right things and, you know, we're looking forward to see, you know, the, 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 the facilities really upgraded because I think, you know, we look at crime and, and we, we, we think about all the problems. But some of the solutions is, is getting kids active, getting kids playing sport, getting them, you know, in healthy recreation and, and facilities is a big plus and a big step towards this end. According to Shabazz, now is the time for corporate Trinidad and Tobago to make its move. We've seen a lot from this Ministry of Sport. A lot of people would like to say that uh, Arnie Roberts has been the worst minister. That has not been my experience. In fact, I think he has been the best minister of sports that, that, that I and, 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 and Caledonia AIA and a lot of people in football have, you know, experience. However, uh, there were a lot of people who incorporate Trinidad and Tobago who said that they want to see Jack Warner out of the football and when they're not involved because Jack Warner is involved. Now Jack Warner is out of the football. Where are these corporate giants, where are these people to come forward and support not just football but sport in general? So we can see the, 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 the sloppiness in, 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 in these people get coming forward to play their role is an indication that it was just talk, that they were just saying the right things. You know, I think the society has reached to the point where we hear nice things, you know, but now it's time for us to do. You know, the time for talk is gone and is over, and the time to do is now because the crime and, 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 and the criminal activity is at our doorstep. The former national senior team football coach had some advice for national sporting organizations. National sporting associations should not go to war on a public level with the Ministry of Sport. I think uh, dialogue is there and, 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 you know, I know the minister, he's not a beast. He's aggressive and he likes a good fight. But he is a person with a lot of reason and, and, and tremendous love for sport and, and discipline in sport. And I think all the national sporting associations could fight him in closed doors. I think I think that is the best place for them to fight, not, you know, out in public. I don't see the doctors. I don't see the lawyers fighting in public and, and all these, you know, other professions. Why, you know, the, 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 the sporting fraternity want to make these open battles and, and we are all in the same fraternity? I don't see the sense in it. We in Cunningham. News 4 Sports. News 4 continues right after the break. Stay with us. Speaking about his expectations for Tobago coming out of the national budget, the Tobago Hotel and Tourism Association President Nicholas Hardwick says he expects the government to make good on the THA's request geared towards Tobago's further development. THGA President Nicholas Hardwick says tourism is to Tobago what oil and gas is to Trinidad. And therefore, the government must take Tobago's tourism into deep consideration when delivering the 2014-2015 budget packages. He elaborated on a number of areas within Tobago, but more so the tourism sector, 
where emphasis should be placed on by the central government. Now, uh, those priorities fall into a number of areas. Obviously, marketing is very important. National marketing um, is, is essential for success in the tourism industry. We must let the outside world know that we exist and what we have to offer. We've spoken about a brand marketing campaign, a national brand marketing campaign, since September 2011, I think. Uh, to date, we don't have one. He doesn't believe the government did well in its 2012 to 2013 fiscal year, but is optimistic about the upcoming one. Perhaps things, the, the necessary mechanisms weren't in place to fully implement at that stage and that was partially behind their, their thinking. Um, but nonetheless, we feel that all the um, principal aspects in terms of a functioning TDC, a functioning tourism division with the THA, a fully functioning and ambitious Ministry of Tourism are there. And we would like to see the Ministry of Finance fund them appropriately so that they can get out and do their job. Another area that needs immediate attention, according to Hardwick, is security on the island. National security is also a, a part of, of our focus yeah. um, uh, in terms of creating a positive visitor environment. It has to be safe and secure. Tobago, to a certain degree, has styled itself on being clean, green, safe and serene. And uh, clearly, you know, having the, the resources on island in terms of the police, the other law enforcement agencies is an important part of maintaining that, that profile. I mean, we should be safe as islanders anyway. Um, and that we would always expect, but if it is that uh, in order to facilitate tourism, that is our leverage to get the government to take security uh, and, and, and you know, public safety seriously in Tobago, then so be it. He said the police service in Tobago is woefully inadequate, a major issue that must be fixed. Additionally, he doesn't expect the officers to perform at their best with a lack of proper work facilities. The idea of Tobago having its own police service specifically for tourism purposes was brought up by the THG president. That all police, in fact all law enforcement, all security personnel on the island ought to have an element of tourism orientated policing uh, taught to them. Um, uh, additional to that, uh, we also want to see a tourism police force on the island. This has become a benchmark issue in respect of some of the other uh, regional destinations. The Tobago House of Assembly has requested $4.9 billion of the national budget to deal with Tobago's affairs, with the largest requested sum of approximately $900 million for the tourism sector. But what if the government does not give Tobago its requested allocation? So if, if the government do not back that rhetoric, um, those promises with, with appropriate action, with appropriate funding, then it is just going to contribute to a loss of confidence. The National Budget Day for the fiscal year 2014-2015 has been announced to be read on Monday, September 9, 2013. This announcement was made by the Prime Minister, the Honorable Kamala Prasad Bisasa, after consultations were held with the Minister of Finance, the Honorable Larry Hawaii. Reporting from Tobago, Patricia Nicholson, News 4. Well, that's how we wrap up this edition of our News 4 Report, a product of the Government Information Services Limited and the Ministry of Communications. I'm Nicola Barato. Thank you for joining us.